Today I'm going to be showing you how you can accurately calculate Uniswap V3 liquidity pools so that way you can determine the best and the most high performing liquidity pools for your portfolio. Let's hop in. First things first, I want to go and mention that we are going to be using our in-house software called Builder Metrics. Now we have a ton of updates that are coming to Builder Metrics, which is why you have not seen a lot of changes in the past few months. With that being said, we're going to head right into the calculate page. And I do want to mention that some networks are currently down and some networks are slow. And I'm going to give you a full disclaimer that this is completely out of our control. We pulled down data directly from the Uniswap V3 subgraphs. And when the Uniswap V3 subgraphs, which are managed by the graph, as well as Uniswap V3 are down or they're having issues, that falls back on us. And that causes Builder Metrics to have issues. And there's absolutely nothing that we could do about that unless we were to go and spend like $50,000 to develop our own blockchain data indexing system or something like that. But that's besides the point. We have plenty of networks here that work. So let's go and take a look. The first one I'm going to go and take a look at is wrapped Bitcoin to Ethereum on the Ethereum network. Now I want to go and mention that you can utilize any single pair, any single network for the strategies that I'm about to show you. I'm essentially going to be giving you a breakdown on how you can utilize this and maximize your earnings by using builder metrics. So there's a few different things that we need to look at. Number one is the liquidity distribution. The liquidity distribution is very, very important. As you can see, the pink line is going to represent the current price. As I move this pink line, you can see that my APR is changing. So if I move the pink line to somewhere where there is a ton of liquidity, let's just say that's over here, you could see I'm getting roughly 6.47%. Whereas if I go right to the left just a little bit, I'm now getting 13%. The reason why is because there's barely any liquidity right here, but there's a ton of liquidity right to the right of the current price. So as soon as the price moves just a little bit, well now I'm going to get 6% as opposed to 14%. So my lesson here is if you're looking at a pool and you notice that there's a huge block of liquidity and the liquidity is not evenly distributed and you notice that you're not on that huge block of liquidity you need to not assume that you're going to get this 14 percent but rather play around with this current price and say oh i'm actually going to get 6.5 percent not 14 percent people often a lot of the times just have the price a little bit to the left of the big block of liquidity and think hey i'm actually going to be getting you know 14 percent or so by hopping in this pool and they actually hop in and they end up getting six percent because the price was right to the left you need to keep that in mind and you need to adjust this current price. One good example is going to be ARB to Ethereum on the Arbitrum network. Taking a look at this, we can see that we have a ton of liquidity right over here, but there's barely any liquidity over here as well as over here. So if we're analyzing this and seeing that we're going to get 54%, we need to take that number with a grain of salt because assuming the price moves just a little bit, like over here, we're actually going to get 15%. As you can see, these APRs are very different. If the price is right here, we're getting 50%. As soon as the price moves just a little bit, we're now getting 14%. So do do take those numbers with a grain of salt when you see 50% and you see that liquidity distribution is all out of whack. So that's my first lesson to you guys. Make sure you're looking at liquidity distribution and make sure you're adjusting the price to see how the APR changes over specific liquidity points. The next thing that's also very important is going to be TVL history. If we take a look at the TVL history right now, you can see it's slowly gone up over time. And this is most likely due to the fact that ARB and Ethereum have been increasing in price. So that's completely fine. But if there's a ton of of TVL coming in and the TVL is consistently coming in, you need to also take the numbers with a grain of salt. Whereas vice versa, if there was a ton of TVL before and now there's not nearly as much TVL, you also need to factor that in. And what I mean is if the TVL is going down, so it was very, very high at the very start of this period and very low at the very end of this period, that means you're actually going to get a higher APR than what you actually initially calculated. And that's where you'd want to adjust the calculation range. A better way to show this is going to be throughout volume history. Let's take a look at a different pair. So I have Ethereum to Radiant pulled up in this scenario, and I'm not going to adjust the range or anything like that. And if we go and we look at the volume history, you can see that it is not consistent whatsoever. Recently, ever since the beginning of February, the volume has actually seen an increase. But if you look back a little bit further, the volume has actually seen a decrease. So if we look at this APR, you can see we're getting roughly 19.7%. What we would want to do to get an APR that's more accurate is not factor in the old data, because this data is no longer consistent. We'd want to factor in the more recent data. So we could say ever since, February 2nd, which that would be roughly 20 days ago. Uh, so we would just set our calculation range instead of 30 days to 20 days. We keep our range exactly the same. And now we're actually getting 18%. So we're getting a little bit lower. And in this case scenario, it's not a huge difference. But in some other pairs, it is a huge difference. 
Or we could say, hey, well, this is also old data, and that's not consistent anymore. We're looking at days where we have a lot higher volume, and we can change this over to three days. And in that scenario, we're actually doing 45%. So what this calculation range is doing is essentially changing how many days is factored into the calculation when it comes to APR. Because what Builder Metrics does is it takes into account historical data all the way up until 365 days. But the very default is 30 days. So we'll take into account 30 days worth of volume as well as fees, and then we'll spit that out and determine an APR based on your share of the liquidity pool, basically. So if recently we're getting a ton of volume and before we didn't have nearly as much volume, chances are we're gonna get a higher APR, just like I showed you. Whereas if it's vice versa, and I'll go ahead and pull up an example. So now I'm looking over at Ethereum to Pendle. And if we scroll down and we actually look at the volume history, you could see that the volume has been constantly going down over time. So we do not want to take into account all these days where we go January 21st all the way up until February 7th. And the reason why is because we're not doing volume that high anymore. These days we had at tops roughly six and a half million dollars in volume. Recently, our highest volume is about four and a half million dollars. So we don't want to take into account six and a half million because it's going to show that we're getting a higher APR than we actually are going to get after hopping in the pool. So what I would actually do in this scenario is I would go and I would analyze and I would say, okay, it looks like we've been somewhat consistent since February 10th. So I want to take in about 10 days or so when I do my calculation range. And that's going to pull up 240% APR as opposed to the initial 350% APR. That's a huge difference right there. As I said, Builder Metrics, it uses all this historical data, it puts it all together, and it runs all the calculations. But you still have to do manual work. You don't just adjust your print price, adjust your max price, and your current price, and then you're done. You actually have to go through, you have to analyze the volume history, you have to analyze the TVL history, all of that information to determine if this is going to actually be accurate. So two of the main things that I'm looking at when I'm looking to accurately calculate Uniswap V3 concentrated liquidity pools is number one liquidity distribution and number two volume history. Now, before we get any further, I want to mention that our Uniswap V3 mini course is about to be taken off of the market. We're no longer going to be selling any copies of it. And make sure to take advantage of the $35 price while you still can. Because one thing that we do in the Uniswap V3 mini course is teach you step by step by step all the tips and tricks for Uniswap V3, how to find the high performing concentrated liquidity pools, how to find the ranges for those, how to rebalance them, every single aspect about Uniswap V3, but also the most important part, how to use builder metrics to make your life easier and make sure that you're using builder metrics right. So we're not just telling you, hey, go to buildermetrics.com. None of that. We're essentially telling you exactly how to use it. This video right here is kind of like a preview of the content of what we do in that Uniswap V3 mini course. So I recommend you check that out. And as I said, we're about to make a ton of different updates to build metrics. And if you guys want to be one of the first ones to be able to get access to those updates, but also get early access pricing to the pro version that we are going to be releasing pretty soon, I really recommend you join up on that Uniswap V3 mini course. All of those benefits are going directly to customers of that mini course. This right here is just a short little preview that's nowhere near complete on what exactly we're going to be doing. All of our features that we have available for free right now are going to be exactly the same, but we're about to introduce a pro version that we have institutions lining up at our door ready to pay $500 a month for. And let me tell you one thing, it's going to be a lot cheaper than that. Now on a side note, I want to tell you a little bit about a position that's been doing really, really well for me. Over the past 70 days, I've accumulated roughly $2,000 in fees from this Matic to wrap Bitcoin liquidity pool. If you do the math, that's roughly $29 per day. And as you can see, I collected these fees yesterday and I made another $29. So that's $29 in passive income that I'm generating every single day from this concentrated liquidity pool. The best part is I only deployed roughly $15,000 of capital. That's now also worth $17,215. So I made over $2,000 dollars from fees and I also made over two thousand dollars from price appreciation that's a four thousand dollar profit in the time span of 70 days so I made my asset appreciation and I also made my fees and before you say and permanent loss probably killed me on this pool I had 60 bucks of permanent loss and this pool's still running still doing really really good for me so if you guys do want to learn more about how you can create pools just like this once again check out the mini course also don't forget to drop a like and subscribe and notifications turned on I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I look forward to see you guys in the next one peace out